Mr. Speaker, I'm pl very pleased to stand today to speak about Bill C-226, an aim to amend the Canada Pension Plan, the CPP Investment Board Act, and the Income Tax Act. When I was campaigning last year, and in fact, I've, since I've had many uh, meetings and conversations since then, I've heard over and over again that people are worried about their financial futures, and specifically whether they will be saving enough to retire with security and with dignity. That is why I am pleased to share my reasons for supporting Bill C-26, which aims to address those concerns in a responsible and meaningful way by expanding the CP's plea. Earlier this year, the, prov the provincial finance ministers met with my colleague, the federal finance minister, and agreed that more needed to be done so that all Canadians could retire in dignity. They recognized that boosting the CPP would be a good way to do that. That's an excellent example of the consensus it takes to achieve uh, what is wished for. And right across the country are working harder and longer than ever. According to a 2012 study, almost two-thirds of Canadians are working more than 45 hours per week. That is a 50 percent increase than more than 20 years ago. On top of that, advancements in technology means that workers are on call 24-7. But even with all this extra hours and their hard work, many are concerned that they will not have enough money for retirement. Far too many Canadians are facing significant drops in their quality of a living upon retirement. And in fact, 1.1 million Canadian families are approaching retirement having not saved enough. This is why we have recognized the need to do more for workers and we are taking action. The RPC se veut une source de sécurité. This is a source of financial security for Canadians and has been for over half a century. It provides Canadians with foreseeable benefits year after year. Unlike private investment plans or private retirement plans, it is not subject to market volatility. It also represents the most effective way for Canadians to save money since the large number of contributors allows for the investment board to achieve excellent net yields. Despite all the advantages of the CPP, in recent years it has come to light that the benefits are not high enough to support Canadians retirement. The government has heard those concerns and intends to do something about them. Bill C-26 will significantly increase the benefits received by each and every Canadian under the CPP. With the current plan, Retired Canadians receive up to a quarter of their income. And with these amendments, that will go up to one third to a maximum of $20,000 per person. I know that the CPP plays an important role in ensuring that employees can save for their retirement. Employees work very hard for companies. It is very important to me that they are able to retire with dignity. Madam Speaker, it, it was a priority for our government that we move forward with the expansion in a responsible way. That is why we are phasing it in over several years. 
Starting in 2019, annual CPP contributions will begin to increase modestly over seven years. As an example, a worker owning earning just over $50,000 will contribute an additional $6 per month in, 20, in 2019, and by 2025, that worker earning that same amount will be contributing about $40 per month. The expansion of the CPP will be of benefit to all workers. However, it is very important that workers on the lower end of the income spectrum are not unfairly burdened. Our government understands that while lower income workers want to save more for their retirement, they fight tight budgets that may increase, that making increases to their contributions will be difficult for them. That is why BLC 26 also proposes to increase the working income tax benefit. To offset increases in CPP contributions, the working income tax benefit will be increased to roughly match the level of CPP contributions. This will allow lower-income workers to increase their retirement saving without creating unfair burdens on their tight budgets. I also want to speak about how this legislation would benefit the next generation of workers. Young Canadians face a much different employment landscape than their parents or grandparents did, many of whom worked in the same job for the same company for decades. Many have had access to private pension plans as part of their compensation, providing them with financial security upon retirement. Ce n'est plus la norme. That is, or it is more customary today for workers to change jobs or fields several times, in fact, during their working lives. And that can have consequences, serious consequences, in terms of what they withdraw as a pension later. And what is even more troublesome is to note a general decrease in the number of companies operating or offering pension plans to their employees. There are fewer and fewer to offer defined pension plan programs. And what that means is less financial certainty for these workers once they reach their retirement. All of these factors with rising life expectancy it is becoming more likely that Canadians, and in particular young Canadians, will outlive their savings. The expansion of the CPP uh, mitigates that risk. And in fact, young Canadians who are entering the workforce over the next few years will benefit the most from this, uh, this uh, change to the CPP. As such, this expansion is a tangible investment in the future security of our children and grandchildren. Madam Speaker, in recognizing that this expansion will do most for our younger workers who are just beginning to, uh, to make investments into their CPP, we must acknowledge that too many current retirees are facing significant challenges in making ends meet. That is why our government is also taking steps to improve the quality of life for seniors today. In Budget 2016, our government confirmed that we were boosting the Guaranteed Income Supplement uh, top-up to benefit single seniors of up to $947 annually. This will help lift low-income seniors out of poverty and will provide the financial security of about uh, 900,000 se single seniors across Canada. This increase is directly targeted to assist those seniors who are most vulnerable. Madam Speaker, in closing, I would like to thank my colleague, the Minister of Finance, and his provincial and territorial counterparts for their hard work on this important issue. This expansion is an important part of ensuring that all Canadians have a secure and dignified retirement, and I'm very proud to stand here in support of Bill C-26. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Questions and comments. Questions et commentaires, the Honourable Member for Kitchener Conestoga. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. I want to thank my colleague for her remarks. Uh, this summer, I had the privilege of talking to an accountant who manages the payroll for a number of small and medium sized companies. And when she heard about this proposed CPP increase, she was very concerned because she's concerned that not only will it not allow uh, um, uh, 
firms to hire new people, but it may actually, in some cases, require the layoff of some people because of the increased CPP premiums over time. So my question is, how can it possibly be of benefit to have a few seniors earning a few more dollars in retirement when there's hundreds of thousands of jobs being lost across the country for people that really need the jobs now? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister. Uh, Madam Speaker, I thank my honourable colleague for his question. And uh, the, the, our government has taken a responsible approach to implement, implementing the expansion of CPP. Uh, as I said in my statement, it starts in 2019 and it increases uh, over time to, uh, to 2025. And Madam Speaker, I want, I want to be clear about the expansion. As I mentioned, it'll start for someone making about $50,000, it'll start at $6 and by 2025 be $43 extra that they are putting into their retirement. This will equal to roughly, if you, if you do the math, about $2 per day that someone, uh, Canadians, people in my riding of Whitby, will be able to securely put into a fund that they will be able to use when they retire, ensuring that they're able to retire with dignity. So I think many employers are really looking to this as a way to show that their employees that they are actually committed to ensuring that they are retire, retire with dignity. As they, as they currently do with their CPP bond contributions, but making it a little bit more. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Okay. And comments, questions, and commentaires. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Madam Speaker, and I thank my colleague for sharing her thoughts on Bill C-26. And if I may just pose a, a more general uh, question. Today we're debating the issue of the Canada Pension Plan, but one of the things I like to think that the Prime Minister has done so well is it's more than just the CPP. We saw there's three real fundamental uh, foundations to our pension programs, those public pensions. CPP, today we're dealing with it. We had the OAS where uh, shortly after taking governance, uh, the Prime Minister and the Liberal government uh, in essence reduced the age from retirement from 67 to 65. That reversed something that Harper, uh, the former Prime Minister, had put in, into place. And also the guaranteed income supplement. And the guaranteed income supplement uh, increase will see some of the poorest, if not the poorest seniors from all regions of our country receive a substantial increase, somewhere in the neighborhood of $900 more, uh, Mr. Speaker, helping those uh, seniors that are most uh, affected by the issue of poverty. And I'm wondering if my colleague would just share her thoughts as to what I believe, and I'm sure she thinks likewise, as a government that truly cares about our seniors. All right, uh, Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister. Uh, well, Madam Speaker, I want to thank my colleague for his question and for eloquently stating some of the initiatives our government has taken to really look at what is happening with our senior population, not just for today, but putting steps in place so that we could uh, take care of them uh, tomorrow. Uh, as mentioned, the, the OAS was rolled back so that, so that uh, seniors could retire at 65. You know, they've been planning to do so all their lives and now, you know, hearing that they may have to work an extra two years. I know uh, in, in talking with some mm -hmm. of the residents in Whitby, they were concerned about that. Uh, the guaranteed income supplement uh, of about $1,000 for them also helps. So it helps them today, but the expansion helps those tomorrow. For a brief question, questions and commentaires, questions and comments, the honourable member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank my colleague for her speech. Um, Finance Canada has said that this new CPP increase will reduce employment, reduce the GDP, reduce business investment, reduce disposable income, and reduce private savings by 7%. So I wonder if the member could comment. The, uh, very brief answer from the minister, uh, from the uh, 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 Prime Secretary, the Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, we know that Canadians are not saving enough for their retirement right now. And as I mentioned, that $2 a day that we will be expanding the CPP by would allow those people who, who currently put those $2 in a jar and take it out every time they have their car breaks down or something happens in their family, that $2 a day stays in a fund that allows them to have security and dignity when they retire. And that is what our government is looking forward to have for our senior population. 